Over 20 years ago, a young American couple adopted a Russian girl. But eventually, the parents began to fear she was capable of murder. For this week's 48 Hours, Troy Roberts sat down with her decades later to discuss her surprising story. How old were you when you were adopted? I was nine, and that's what I wanted. I want to feel loved, and I want a family. <sighs> Crystal and Jesse, we agreed not to use their last name, first arrived in Moscow, Russia in 1997 to adopt a girl they named Kara Lee and a boy they named Joshua. When we finally learned that we were going to be able to go over to Russia and pick up a little boy and girl of our own, it was just a tremendous event. And we were very excited. How did the agency describe Carolee? A wonderful, outgoing, intelligent little girl. But they say Carolee started behaving badly not long after they returned home. There was a coldness in her and an anger and just a distance. She stole all my jewelry. Our knives were disappearing. And then she snapped. They say she tried to kill her baby brother. She had Joshua. him in her hands and was going to throw him over the deck. She had him? Yes. Yes. Over the side here? Yes. And I just started screaming, put him down, Carolee. Put him down. What are you doing? I'm going to kill him. Dr. Brian Kennedy was one of the psychiatrists who saw Carolee. This child I would consider to be a homicide risk. We've had cameras installed, and we've had alarms installed on her doors. So you plan on taking Carolee back to Russia? Yes. Yes. I was with them 21 years ago when they brought Carolee back to Russia and left her there. You're a strong girl. You're a strong girl. I always wondered what became of her. Hey. And last yeah. summer, we were reunited, and we learned what she says happened on the deck that day and about her incredible journey. So Troy Roberts is joining us now with more on his reporting. i got to tell you, Troy, this is like one of the things that makes 48 Hours such a excellent top-notch program. Not only, you know, great correspondence, great storytelling, but the fact that you were able to follow this story for, for a couple of decades is so remarkable. Um, so let's get into this. Um, it's personal for you. You know, how did this affect you? It was clear that everyone was emotional when she was being returned to Russia, and I think including you a little. Hi, Emery. Uh, yes, this was life-changing for me. Um, okay. As a reporter, we parachute into people's lives when they're broken and ask them to tell us their stories. And then we thank them and we leave. And it was so gut-wrenching for me to, to leave this 12-year-old girl at this psychiatric hospital for children in Moscow and, and return to America. Mm. Uh, it haunted me. Uh, I, I, I always wondered like whatever became of her. Um, was she thriving? Was she happy? Did she survive? And uh, it, it was a, a gut-wrenching story for me. I know we're supposed to keep some sort of professional distance, but I, I couldn't do it in this case. Um, you know, I don't know what it's like in Russia, but certainly here we've heard stories of kids who are put into institutions and then they're, they, they're 18 and they're right out the door and they, they're, they're not getting much support. So you just sort of go about finding her um, all these years later. How did you find out what happened to her? Well, the last time I saw her in, in Moscow, I uh, got a hidden camera in a backpack and I, I got inside the locked ward uh, because I wanted to show the conditions that she was left mm -hmm. in. And during my last visit uh, with her, I slipped her rubles and my phone number and told her to put it in her sock and don't tell anybody. I said, don't tell anybody. Mm. Uh, she was eventually picked up by the adoption agency and brought back to the United States. And mm. she called <laughs> um, Mind you, she was 12 at the time. She called me. And we had a 
phone uh, relationship and the agency found out that we were talking and they asked me to stop communicating with her because she needed to move on. So um, we fell out of touch. And then uh, recently uh, we got, my, my producer, Patty Aronofsky, uh, started reaching out to her on social media. And that's when we began communicating again. And last summer, um, I went to her home in North Carolina, where she is married to a lovely man, and she has four children, um, and she works at a hospital, and she's happy. And uh, it was... This uh, is amazing. It was amazing. And what's also interesting about this story is, you know, it was life-changing for me personally, because it set me on my own adoption journey. Um, I, as a single guy, I went to Djibouti, Africa and adopted a four-year-old street boy. Uh, He begged in the streets, he slept on the floor uh, in an abandoned house with his mother and a couple of other people, Uh, no electricity, no running water. And, but when I saw him, I, I, I said, this kid is my kid. Um, I just looked in his eyes and his eyes danced and which was a signal to me that he was smart. He was clever and a little mischievous. Um, but, uh, I, I adopted him. He, he didn't speak English. My French and Somali was very poor. And so, uh, we, we got through it in the initial days by miming. I would mime like eat or sleep or let's go. Um, and, um, I became a dad. Troy, you're going to make me, you're going to make me cry. This is a wonderful (laughs) story. So much more than I expected. Um, so in regards to this little girl who is no longer a little girl, who's all grown up and she's got little girls of her own, I presume. I I, I'm thinking that maybe there's a girl in that bunch because there's four of them. I'm not sure. Um, what's your take on her as a threat as a danger. What did you think of her at, at the at when you knew her at twelve, and you know the woman that she is now? Is she dangerous? She doesn't seem like it. You know what? Um, she was depressed uh, when I met her as mm. as a little girl, but I didn't see any violent behavior. Um, One psychiatrist said that she suffered from attachment disorder, which meant that she had the inability to love. Um, And her adoptive parents said that she was capable of murder. um, And they feared for their safety. Uh, But then there was another psychiatrist who said that she was perfectly fine. Um, I I didn't see any aggressive behavior from her. And... uh, It was a real head-scratcher. It really was. Mm -hmm. Um, What an incredible story, and so sort of appropriate for the season, I think, because it it, it sounds like a story of love, a story of, you know, not counting someone out. I mean, children have a lot of life in them, so much potential. Things change, and and it looks like this is going to be a happy ending. I cannot wait to watch uh, this hour, Troy. It's really, it's already very moving. Thank you. Thank you. Every, everyone, this, there are happy endings to this hour. Everyone seems to have a happy I ending. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, 48 hours keep you on the edge of your seat, and sometimes it's not so happy in the end. So this is, this is the kind of ending that I'm looking forward to. Troy Roberts, thank you. Thank you. So if you want a happy ending, you can watch Troy's report, What Happened to the Perfect Child, on 48 Hours, tomorrow night at 10, 9 central on CBS and the Viacom CBS streaming service, of course, Paramount+.